Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Today we are back with another deck profile for you. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe before you go any further, and particularly before you realise how fucking bad this content is. However, if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back, you absolute fucking raccoon. Get out of this absolute trash heap, you little weirdo. But anyway, that's enough of that silliness from me. We are here today to talk about Salaman Great, one of the most budget-friendly deck options that are out there. It's certainly more of a rogue than it was before, one of the most successful decks of all time, particularly in the short period in which it was untouched before it got absolutely fucking flayed by Konami, and understandably so. But if you're someone that wants to play something a bit of a, somewhere between a combo and a control deck, it kind of blurs the lines between the two, then this might be a really cool option for you. And again, it can be done on a really budget-friendly term. If you're considering picking up the singles for the deck, consider using Jam Jam Cards UK. They are the channel sponsors. There is a link in the description to their eBay store and you can get yourself a nice discount. If they don't have anything on the store that you're looking for, definitely shoot them a message on social media and you'll be able to get something out of them from there. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Just a couple of pointers before we get started. Let me first apologise before we go ahead. If you do hear a loud noise in the background, it is probably the fans on my laptop. Sounds like a fucking jet engine taking off. That's probably exactly what it is. Hopefully, though, you won't hear any of it and it'll be edited out with the audio. The second note here is that this can be extremely budget friendly if you choose to do so. There are some cards in here that of course you would omit in order to do that. And we've tried to keep a little bit of that in mind. The likes of Access Code Talker, though, do kind of breach those rules. But we'll get into that as we go further along. And as a last touch before we go ahead, it is worth noting that Salaman Great doesn't evolve all that much over time. There are many cards coming out for it that directly support it, and the main bulk of the deck is pretty much, I guess what you would call a staple. The deck is kind of fixed in its way, although there is quite a bit of room that you could try other things, although most of it is filled by cards that just boost that consistency. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the video. So we start off with a single copy of Gazelle. It's up one, so we can only run one, so that's what we do. We have two copies of Foxy here. I think two copies is perfectly fine. You could go up to three if you want additional names uh, to be able to resolve the sort of standard combo that you go through. But I think two copies is perfectly fine as is. We have triple copies of Spinny. I think this is really important for your kind of standard combos and you go through your plays. Some people cut this down in some versions that I've seen, but I think three is perfectly good. We have two copies of Jack Jaguar. If your opponent gets rid of one, you want to be able to get ahead with the other. It means that you've got multiple options here and, of course, can be turned into rank four if you so wish. A single copy of Falco, just again, another good utility piece, as we all know for this deck. We have triple copies of Parallel Exe because a free rank four is fucking awesome. We love that shit, and this works really well in this deck. Definitely one of the most important parts that you can have in here. I definitely wouldn't miss out on using this if you have access to it. We have triple copies of Lady Debug. Lady Debug's a bit of a weird one because it's between this and Flame Buffalo is normally the ones that people toss up between. The thing is with Lady Debug is it is a massive hand trap target. There is no getting around that. It's going to happen either way. But it's about minimizing which ones it gets hit by. And Flame Buffalo just loses to a handful more than this does. And overall, that means that Lady Debug has got a better chance of seeing its effect all the way through. Now, we do have a lot of room in here for hand traps, should we so wish. I think the triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring is pretty much mandatory in here. But triple copies of Ash Blossom, for me, pretty much mandatory. Hits pretty much every deck in some degree. Whether that's effective or not is another matter, but your option is there. We also have triple copies of Nibiru in here. You don't necessarily have to play this, but I really like it as an option. Again, if you're forced to go second, you just obliterate your opponent. Set up that kind of standard line of play. It's easy enough to remove in this deck, trust me. And then you can go about your plays from there. And double copies of Ghost Bell in here. Again, I think the Gamma is a really good option that you could consider, although I think it's less likely to get resolved in this deck than it is in others. And I think with that in mind, Ghost Bell is a really good option. It stops cards like Call by the Grave, but also a number of other cards that can be really high impact against this deck. And so being able to have access to it is a really good option. But again, you can run whatever hand traps you like, depending on the format, depending on the flavor of the week, whatever you like. But Ghost Bell, for me, is a good option. We have triple copies of Desires in here. I really can't see any fathomable reason as to why you wouldn't run it. You need it in here. You're going to tutor out most of your combo pieces anyway. So once they're out and into your graveyard, you're going to get two more cards in your hand. Also, if you don't see that starting combo, you're normally fucked anyway. So you might as well just banish 10 cards off the top and have a chance of being able to play. Triple copies of Cyanet Mining in here. I mean, it's 
yeah, it's silent mine, and it does what it does. Nothing more to explain. A single copy of Call by the Grave, an incredibly powerful power spell. It's at one now, unfortunately. I think it should really be at three, but whilst it's at one, we should still be taking advantage of it as much as we physically can. It's so many decks in so many different ways. It's really good on defense or offense. A really good card, in my opinion. We have a single copy of Upstart Goblin because 39 cards is better than 40. You can fucking argue about that all you like in the comments. We have a single copy of Monster Reborn. Being able to bring stuff back is just nice. You could run another Will of, Will of the Salaman Great if you wanted to, but I think that that's not always the best option because sometimes you just want to reborn your opponent's stuff and take advantage of that from there. We have a single copy of Circle because it's at one, so we're only running one. If it was at more, we would definitely run more. Just a single copy of the field spell. We already know how this goes. You only need it for that initial setup. We have one copy of Will of the Salaman Great. Depending on the format, depends on how many of these you really play. I think that one is perfectly fine as is. For some decks or some formats, you want to play more because it becomes a pseudo soul charge and you need access to those extra resources. I think that one is absolutely fine for the current format. We then play one of each of the traps. You already know exactly what these do. Sometimes I really wish I could play more. Sometimes it's nice to even side additional copies. Just so you've got extra extra ways of outing your opponent's options but with the deck slightly less consistent you don't get quite as much value out of them as you did before but when they come up they come up really strong and we have triple copies of impermanence it's the same every format impermanence and ash blossom if you can fit them into your deck you definitely do they hit so much stuff they're good going for well impermanence is good going first or second i should say so again a really good option to have available to you Moving straight into the extra deck here. So we start off with Baguska. Sometimes you're not going to be able to really play and get into that combo. You can get two fours on the field. You can Baguska them and wait two to three turns. Put you in a really good position. We have Dugares. This is a fire, so that does come up. This is a really good way of being able to accelerate your plays. I think a lot of the time we are missing options that allow us to just keep turboing through things, especially with the likes of Mirage, Stalio, and that not being in here. I find that this is a really good option to try out, and it's worked really well for me in any testing that I've done. When I played this at Locals, it was really, really good. Something you should definitely try out in your builds. We have Abyss Dweller in here because switching off the graveyard is fucking nice. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Abyss Dweller, a really good option. Doesn't work against every deck, but when it does work, usually it can put you in a really strong position. Now we're going to fly through these links here. I think two copies of Heat Leo is absolutely fine. Triple copies of Sunlight Wolf is absolutely mandatory. Triple copies of Bailing is mandatory as well. Pretty much self-explanatory, I think. We have a single copy of Linger Ebo here. It's just a really good utility card and again, a way of getting stuff off the field and into the grave and being able to go about your plays from there. Just again, a really good option for me. We have Splash Mage and Transcode Talker. These are for going into those combos that allow you to go up into Access Code. Some people will play Update Jammer as well for going for massive damage. I think that this works fine as is, but again, you can change this as and how you need. There is a little bit of room in here to flex, especially with some of the cards that have been hit, and these will be kind of your flex spots that you could go through if you want to try something different. And that is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, which nobody fucking does, trust me, or one of the few if you do, you'll have hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to see more of this content, make sure that you do, and of course hit the notification bell if you want to make sure that you can see it as soon as it drops. This isn't, by the way, the only kind of content we do on the channel, although we are doing an absolute slew of deck profiles at the moment. We do have the likes of combo tutorials, how to play videos, and just general ass Harry from myself. But again, thank you very much for coming along and thank you for making it this far into the video. If you haven't already, you should definitely be hitting subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.